Well, a little bit more on dinosaurs. You can find it here. Now, I've got an online set of pictures at another website that's not, not mine on dinosaurs. Take a look at this. Under the letter D, dinosaurs, D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R-S. Reference number two, photos from the Paluxy River. Now, I can't connect it from here because I'm not online. But you can look at the photos and see what we're talking about because I've got comments from one of the ones involved in those photos. But we can look at this as well. The Mesozoic Strata Dinosaur Fossils. Proceeding higher in the supposed but falsely asserted geologic common column. This is falsely asserted because it's not there's no evidence of its consistency throughout the planet, though not always or even usually higher in actual formational superposition. They never find it in the right position around, consistently around the Earth. So we come to the extensive so-called Mesozoic strata, including the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous systems. So the index fossils, I use that in quotes, for these strata are again marine organisms, especially the ammonites. Again, there are many different kinds of these and of the other characteristic marine creatures of the period, and apparently they fall into large numbers of more or less distinct horizons, which have been used as a basis for interregional and even intercontinental correlation. It is probable that these zones of similar assemblages of fossils in rock strata can be explained on much the same basis as the zones of similar assemblages of trilobites and brachiopods in the Paleozoic strata. And then there's the better explanation is a worldwide flood. Why? Because things that are more dense and circular, spherical, sink faster than things that are less dense and less spherical. Amorphous sometimes, different forms. They'll float longer, be up higher in water. So if you have flood waters, that's where they uh, originally buried things. And uh, in local floods, there was a local flood in Northern California that produced a mini Grand Canyon. And that's exactly what happened. Those spherical, denser items, whatever they might be, hit the bottom, and the less spherical, Things like uh, human bodies, instead of uh, marine shell bodies, will be floating on top and dis uh, dis uh, disintegrate. They don't have a, a shell body. So, the supposedly equivalent continental strata of the Mesozoic contain probably the most interesting of all fossils, those of the great dinosaurs. The question of the sudden extinction of these powerful creatures that supposedly ruled the Earth for so long is still one of the great mysteries of uniformitarian paleontology. I use that word uniformitarian. Things are, as we appear today, as we examine them and observe them today, are the same as they've always been. Why would you say that? Maybe they weren't. Various theories have been suggested, such as destruction by volcanoes, changes in environments, eating of dinosaur eggs by increasing numbers of mammals, some sort of dinosaur disease epidemic, and so on. Of course, the problem is, I asked this question today of somebody, and they got berserk with me. <laughs> I say, dinosaurs couldn't exist today. Why? Not enough air pressure, oxygen, not enough plant life, and the sunlight, ultraviolet radiation, causes things to uh, have a shorter lifespan. Yet there are plenty of dinosaurs on the planet, but smaller versions, inch or two or three long, or even smaller, and some dog size, and some, the, uh, I forget what the name of this is, uh, exotic island. Uh, anyway, these are some of the theories that have been advi advanced to explain the sudden extinction of dinosaurs throughout the world. Each theory, I don't call it a theory, it's a, it's a guess, will explain the death of some dinosaurs in some places, but attempts to apply any of them or combinations of them to worldwide extinction have failed. The dinosaur story is like a mystery thriller with the last pages torn out. A most important part is missing. The most important part is missing. That is true, and the paleontologist knows it. He also knows the riddle will probably never be solved.
J.M. Good, T. E. White, and G.F. Stucker, the Dinosaur Quarry, U.S. Government Printing Office, and so on. Or at least it will never be solved as long as paleontologists insist on a uniformitarian explanation. The biblical deluge is a quite adequate solution. If a representative dinosaurs were taken on the ark, presumably young ones, then it is likely that their final extinction is accounted for by the sharp changes in climate after the flood. Right. Not enough air pressure, not enough oxygen for them to live. They're too big. And not enough vegetation. On the other hand, elephants are having a problem right now, right? Eating. On the other hand, some may have persisted for a long time, possible accounting for the universal occurrence of dragons in ancient mythologies that sound like they're dinosaurs and people observe them. Another mystery connected with the dinosaurs is the number of great dinosaur graveyards found in various parts of the world. The entombment of such numbers of great, such great creatures literally demands some form of catastrophic action. They all didn't die in one place at one time, right? One such location, the Dinosaur National Monument in Utah and Colorado in the Morrison Formation of the Jurassic, for example, has yielded remains of more than 300 dinosaurs of many different kinds. The quarry area is a dinosaur graveyard, not a place where they died. A majority of the remains probably floated down a westward flowing river until they were stranded on a shallow sandbar. Some of them, such as the stegosaurs, may have come from a far away dry land areas to the west. Perhaps they drowned trying to ford a tributary stream or were washed away during floods. Some of the swamp dwellers may have mired down on the way the very sandbar that became their grave, while others may have floated for miles before being stranded. Interestingly enough, they all seem to be facing in the right some direction. Water does that. They're not going to all walk in the same direction necessarily all the time. One could hardly ask for a better description of the way in which these great reptiles were overwhelmed, drowned, and buried by the deluge waters. As far as changes within the dinosaur lines were concerned, the most conspicuous was the tendency for each group of fossils found in successfully higher located strata to evolve from small ancestors to large descendants. The result of smaller to the larger would follow from the hydrodynamic selectivity of water. As I said, the more spherical, the more dense. The bottom, the more it hits the bottom. The lower it goes. On the other hand, evolutionist Dr. Colbert, probably the chief authority on dinosaurs, says, it is interesting to note that the giantism was achieved independently by various separate lines of dinosaurian evolution. Time and again in the collective history of these reptiles, a phylogenetic line had its beginning with small animals and very quickly progressed to animals of large or even huge size. How come the, the small animals still exist? Edwin Colbert, maybe it's the other way around. Big animals came first. Evolutionary growth rates in the dinosaurs. However, the evidence points more strongly to a universal worldwide flood acting in accordance with the laws of a hydrodynamic selectivity of moving water. When two waves come together, wham! What's deposited? The most dense and most spherical and smaller. And then things come back later up. That's how they float in water. Just get a jar of water and, and experiment. It's always the same. It is not how much of this tendency has been inferred from actual fossil possession and successive strata, but to the extent that it's based on an objective field evidence. It would seem merely to result from the abilities of the larger and more mature animals to escape the floodwaters longer. This is exactly what one would expect to find in general in the dinosaurian sediments of the deluge. What do shells do? They can't get out of the way. They just sit there on the ground and get floated into the bottom of the sea. So... We've got the mammals that come later. Let's move on to dinosaurs. In the Bible, here's what we've got. Including sea, including sea uh, dwelling monster sized creatures on day five and dinosaurs on day six, as the creation account occurs. Creatures. Tanum, serpents, dragons, sea monsters, not limited to whales, refers to sea-dwelling dinosaur-type creatures. Lamentations 4.3, even dragons have drawn out the, be the breast. They have suckled the young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel like the ostriches in a wilderness. Take a look at Job 40, 15 to 24. Look now at the behemoth, which I made along with you. He eats grass like an ox. Now see his strength in his is in its hips, and his power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar, like a tree. A tail 
an animal with a tail the size of a cedar, the sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like beams of bronze. His ribs are like bars of iron. That's describing a huge creature. He is the first of the ways of God. Only he who made him can bring near his sword. Huge. Surely the mountains yield food for him, and all the beasts of the field play there. He lies under the lotus trees in a covert of reeds and marsh. The lotus trees cover him with their shade. The willows of the brook surround him. Indeed, the river may rage, and he is, but he is not disturbed. He is confident, though the Jordan gushes into his mouth. It's huge. Though he takes it in his eyes, or one pierce pierces his nose with a snare, notice that the monster behemoth has a tail like a cedar tree, bones like huge tubes of bronze, limbs like giant bars of iron, and armor plate with barbs, which makes him invincible. He drinks huge amounts of water. He is the first of the works of God, rather refers to the first in size, the largest of the animals that God created. The behemoth is so awesome that there is nothing that he fears more which can defeat him. This description of an animal which existed alongside of man can be nothing other than the huge land-dwelling reptilian monster dinosaur. Furthermore, Job 41, 1-34, describes a leviathan as a water-dwelling monster who is likewise invincible, fearsome, fire-breathing, Note that smaller types of reptiles and other creatures that exist today can breathe out flames, and with an atmosphere with a much higher oxygen content, this characteristic would be even more prevalent in pre-flood times. This monster has a scaly reptilian-like hide with sharp protective protusions, which could be pierced by sword, spear, or other weapons. The Leviathan can rise himself up to do battle against whom no one can prevail, and Leviathan is so huge that when he comes through the water, it is described as follows. When our Leviathan rises, the mighty are terrified. They withdraw because of his thrashing. The sword that reaches him will have no effect, nor will a spear or dart or arrow. He regards iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. No arrow can make him flee. Sling stones become like stubble to him. A club is regarded as stubble, and he laughs at the sound of a javelin. His undersides are jagged potsherds, spreading the mud like threshing sledge. He makes his, the depth seethe like a seethe, like a cauldron. He makes the sea like an ointment jar. He leaves a shining wake behind him. One would think the deep had gray hair. He has no equal on earth, a creature devoid of fear. He, surver he surveys everything that is haughty. He is king over all the proud beasts. Such a creature can only be a water-dwelling reptilian-like monster which roamed the earth the same time as man did. He speaks to Job of these things. So, Tannin, in the theological word book of the Old Testament, the word denotes any large reptile, referring to anything from large snakes to enormous sea creatures. Note that the Hebrew word for jackals is very similar to tannin, the, the plural form for the word tan, large reptile. Since evidence for dinosaur dragon types was not yet discovered at the time of the 1611 King James translation of the Bible, the word jackals was substituted instead of a number of places in Scripture. We've corrected that. Nevertheless, dinosaurs are correctly rendered here. So if you want to see the latest update of these dinosaur tracks in the Paluxy River, go here. HTTP and so on. And take a good look at it. He's got some good explanations of that. And I was in that museum right near that Paluxy River site and I saw that big rock that they cut carved out of the riverbed and brought through and examined the human footprints to make sure they weren't carved in. Way back in the 40s, I think it was, that was discovered, the 30s, and they said that was a hoax and everything else, but they took that foot and cut through the toes and they found that the uh, impression of little bubbles when you squish through your feet through mud, the toes separate and the mud comes up between the fingers or the, the toes and it bubbles up like that. It, that can't be, uh, it can't be carved or drawn or carved into rock or chiseled. It's too microscopic. So take a look at www.bible.ca slash tracks slash tracks.htm.